The goal of this video is to learn the 141 rule, which is a way to find a three point quadratic approximation for signed area. Or, perhaps more relevantly, it's the first step towards Simpson's rule. So here's the plan. Given a graph over a closed interval, we're going to choose three representative sample points on the graph. Then we're going to fit a parabola, in other words, the graph of a quadratic polynomial to those three points. And we're going to use that quadratic polynomial graph to find a quadratic approximation for the area under the original curve. Now, if you're familiar with this method called Simpson's rule for approximating signed area, the 1 for 1 rule is really just the motor that's under the hood. So it makes Simpson's rule work. And so that's why it's worth sort of studying it in detail. So let's say you have your original function. Here's the graph of a function on a closed interval. What we will do is we will select the midpoint of the interval and we'll find that function value. And then we're going to use these three function values, these three points on the graph, to fit a quadratic polynomial graph, in other words, a parabola, on those three points. Now it turns out under mild hypotheses, three points in the plane determine a unique parabola. And we could go into the, the theory of this, but we really won't need it for what we're doing here. Once we have this parabola, we're going to be able to find the area underneath it very simply because we can integrate quadratic functions easily. And hopefully that'll be a good approximation to the area. So let's take the half width of the interval, we'll call that h, and we'll call the function values at these three sample points, y, l, y, c, and y, r, left, center, and right, y coordinates. And we will discover by the end of this video that the area of the quadratic approximation winds up being this simple function of those quantities, h over 3 times yl plus 4yc plus yr. In other words, you take the weighted average, if you like, of the three function values with weights 1, 4, and 1, and you take that and multiply it by the half width h, and that gives you this area of the quadratic approximation. To derive this rule, it turns out to be no loss of generality to assume that the center point occurs at the origin. So we're going to shift our whole picture over so that the center is the origin. And that means that our x-coordinates of our right-hand endpoint, our x-coordinate of the y-hand endpoint is h, and the x-coordinate of the left-hand endpoint is negative h by symmetry. And then the coordinates of these three points we've chosen would be just this negative h, y, l, 0, y, c, and h, y, r. And we're looking for some quadratic polynomial q that has a formula ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you might think that we could find the coefficients a, b, and c in terms of the given quantity, so we, we crank out that quadratic explicitly, and then once we, use, once we find that quadratic polynomial, then we could integrate the polynomial to find the area. And we could do that, but we're going to be a little sneakier about this. We're going to start finding the area first, and then figure out how to express that area in terms of the coefficients. And we'll never really get around to finding a, b, and c explicitly. So q of h at the right endpoint, q of h, if you plug h into your formula for q, you get y, r. And so you get this equation, a, h squared plus b, h plus c, which is what you get when you use the formula for q, has to be equal to y, r. So that's one of the relationships between the coefficients and the given quantities h and y, r. And we're going to play the same game, q of 0. q of 0 is really easy to use to, to, to calculate using the formula. That's just going to be c. So it turns out that c has to be yc, in fact. And then q of negative h, plug negative h into your formula for q. And you simplify it, and you get h squared minus bh plus c. That has to be yl. So we get these three equations, and we're going to put these all off to the side. Again, at this point, we could solve for a, b, and c in terms of these known quantities, but we're going to keep plowing ahead and just try to calculate area and see where we land. So the area is the integral of q from negative h to h. So we'll put in our formula, ax squared plus bx plus c. And now we're going to break this up into two integrals. So it's the integral of ax squared plus c on the interval, and it's plus the integral of bx on the interval. And we'll notice that the linear function bx, because it's y 
intercept is zero. It's actually an odd function. It's a line that goes through the origin, so it has odd symmetry. And so when we integrate on the interval from negative h to h, we're just going to get zero. So we don't have to worry about that piece at all. Now we're going to concentrate on this other integral, and we'll notice that ax squared plus c is an even function that we're integrating from negative h to h. So we can simplify matters a little bit by integrating from 0 to h and doubling it. Just make sure you remember your symmetries, your odd and even symmetries, and, and how this relates to definite integrals on symmetric intervals about the origin if you're confused about this. But the area then that we're looking for turns out to be twice the integral of ax squared plus c from 0 to h. The fundamental theorem tells us that we can find the antiderivative, plug in h and 0, and subtract. And you get, when all the dust settles, this quantity right here. So the area is twice the quantity 1 3rd a h cubed plus c h. Now we're going to do a little simple algebra here. We're going to multiply the 2 on the inside. And then we're going to factor out an h over 3. So that's going to leave h over 3 times the quantity 2ah squared plus 6c. So at this point, that is our area in terms of h, a, and c. And we want this in terms of the original data, yl, yc, and yr. So we got to do a little work. But you'll notice what's going on here is our equations off to the side. If we add those two equations, we get 2ah squared plus 2c equals yl plus yr. So that's nice. That's almost what's in the parentheses on the right-hand side, but we're just missing 4c. But we can, we can see how to get the missing 4c. We'll take this equation, c equals yc, and we're going to multiply both sides by 4. And now we can take these two equations, and we can add those together. And when we add those together, we get 2ah squared plus 6c equals the quantity yl plus 4yc plus yr. So we're going to substitute that right into our formula. And when we do that, we get that the area is h over 3 times the quantity yl plus 4yc plus yr. And remember, h is the half width. And this formula is what we are calling the 1 for 1 approximation for area under this quadratic curve. Let's take a look at an example. We're going to take the graph of cosine on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, and we're going to use the 1 for 1 approximation to approximate the signed area. This is an example that we already understand how to do quite simply using the fundamental theorem. So this will be a good test drive to see if our, if our 1 for 1 approximation seems to work. And the midpoint is going to be pi over 4. Our half width, then, is going to be pi over 4 as well. And the function values we care about are going to be cosine of 0, which is 1. yc will be cosine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. And our value at the right-hand side will be cosine of pi over 2, which is just 0. We can now just plug in all this information into our template, the 1 for 1 approximation. And you get this quantity. When all the dust settles, you get pi over 12 times 1 plus 2 root 2. Put that into your calculator, and you're going to find out that that's approximately 1.00228. And we know the actual area is just the integral of cosine from 0 to pi over 2, which is exactly 1. And if you calculate the relative error, you'll find that that is 0.23% relative error in, in our approximation. That's a pretty good approximation. What's going on here is if you, you manage to graph the quadratic approximation through the three points we selected, you'll notice that the fit of the quadratic approximation to the actual graph of cosine is really good. And that's why our 1 for 1 approximation is doing a good job of approximating the area. Let's try another example. We'll try the reciprocal function on the interval from 1 to 3. The midpoint in this case is going to be 2. So our half width will be 1. And the values of the functions will just be the reciprocal of 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Again, we will just plug this right into our template for the 1 for 1 approximation carefully work out the details, and you get 10 ninths, or about 1.111. And if you calculate the actual area using the fundamental theorem, you'll find the antiderivative to be ln of x, plug in 3, 1, and subtract, and you get ln of 3 on the nose, which, when you approximate this with your calculator, you'll find is about 1.0986. 
again, pretty good. And if you calculate the relative error, not quite as good as before, but we get about a little over 1% relative error. And once again, this is reflective of the fact that if you graph the quadratic polynomial that hits these three sample points, it is a pretty good fit of the original graph. So once again, we're getting a decent approximation, not quite as good as the one before. Let's look at a third example. Here we have the exponential function, e to the x, and we're going to use the 1, 4, 1 approximation to find the signed area from negative 1 to 3. Now the total width of the interval is 4, so the midpoint is 1 and the half width is 2. And our function values are going to be e to the negative 1, e to the 1, and e to the third power. And so we're going to, once again, plug these straight into our template for the 1, 4, 1 approximation and just check that everything works out right, but you'll notice this gives you an approximation of a little bit uh, less than 21, 21.88. Our actual area in this case will be the integral of e to the x on the interval from negative one to three. Fundamental theorem is gonna tell us this is e cubed minus the reciprocal of e, which is about 19.717657, etc. And the relative error in this case now is almost 6%. Not nearly as good as the previous two. And if you, if you actually graph the quadratic that hits these three sample points, you'll see what the problem is. Our quadratic now no longer does a good job of resembling the graph on the interval in question. So actually, it seems we're almost lucky to get something that's as good as it, as good as it is because uh, it's a miserable looking fit on that interval. Let's finish with uh, hopefully an enlightening example. Um, what is the area of a parabolic arch of width w and height h? So you have a quadratic graph that has width w and height h here, and we'll notice that in this instance the 1 for 1 rule should yield the actual area because we're, we're finding the area of a quadratic graph. So our quadratic, our quadratic approximation should match it exactly. This isn't going to give us an approximation. The one for one rule is actually gonna give us the area. So the half width in this case is one half w, and the function values at the two endpoints are both zero. The center function value is h, the height of the arch. And so our parabolic approximation here, um, our parabolic area, in fact, it's not an approximation because it is the graph of a quadratic, is going to be just this quantity, and that simplifies to two-thirds the width times the height. And we're gonna put this into context because you can imagine behind the parabolic arch, you can imagine a rectangle, height h width w, and obviously that area is wh. You could also imagine a triangle on the inside with width w and height h, and that obviously has area one-half wh. And you'll notice that the parabolic arch really does fit inside of these two shapes, the rectangular area being one times wh, the parabolic area being two thirds wh, and then the triangular area being the smallest being one half wh. So these all seem to line up correctly and we have the sense that uh, the one for one rule is really doing its job.